Hi guys, welcome! One of the most awaited features of the upcoming episode is the release of the new Soulbinder job class. And in this series of videos, we'll discuss what we know so far about the Soulbinder class and how to prepare in advance. In the first episode of this series, we'll look into the unique characteristics of this class so you can decide whether to create a Soulbinder character. Then in the succeeding videos, we'll focus on the two major builds for this class wherein we'll discuss the recommended stats, skills, runes equipment, and cards for each build. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. For new players, you can become a Soulbinder either by creating a novice character and reaching base level 80 or by finishing the instant T3 quest from Cryptura Academy. While for veteran players, you can use the multi-job system which costs 88 big cat coins. Do take note that the job change voucher from the Disney Treasure Hunt event doesn't have an option for a soul binder, so you cannot use it if you're planning to multi-job. The additional stat granted for unlocking soul binder is int, so it's a good multi for magic classes. You can advance to the Spirit Hunter 3rd job class upon reaching soul binder job level 70. And then upon reaching Spirit Hunter job level 60, you can advance to the Twin Demons 4th job class. Their class exclusive mount is a deer which has the following unlock stats. There are two general builds for Soulbinder, a Burst Magic DPS build or a Support Utility build. If you're coming from a magic class that utilizes the Spell Crit build such as Slayer or Arcane Master, then it will be easy to transition to the Soulbinder DPS build. Aside from Int, Luck will be essential for increasing the DPS of Soulbinder as their skills can deal additional true damage based on Luck with the Mind Penetration passive skill. Having high luck also synergizes with the current spell crit build meta for magic class. This class utilizes both single target and AoE neutral magic damage skills whose element can be converted into wind, earth, water, fire, holy, dark, or ghost using the warm wind skill. The superior element for soul binders is ghost since they have a lot of ghost damage modifiers and a buff that treats enemies as ghosts thereby doubling their damage potential. Hence, you may opt to invest in the following items that boost ghost damage. Another unique trait of Soulbinders is their ability to utilize size modifiers for increasing damage. They even have skills that improve damage to large size, which is great for fighting boss monsters. Some of the notable damage skills are as follows. First, we have Estun, which is a single target magic damage skill that can stun medium sized enemies for 3 seconds. Its damage and CC will be suitable in small scale PvP. Next is Eswu, which is an AoE ground magic skill that lasts for 3 seconds, dealing continuous damage per second. This will be Soulbinder's primary skill in GBG. And then we have Esma which is a single target burst magic damage skill that can only be used within 5 seconds after casting either Estun or Eswu. So this will be a great finishing combo skill after reducing the enemy's HP with Estun or Eswu. One of the most important things that you need to prepare in advance for this build is the weapon. Soulbinders can equip staff type weapons so you may use the wizard's power. It will provide more consistent damage than using Unlimited since their skill rotation cycles between single target and AoE skills. However, I think the new Raging Blade weapon will be better than Wizard's Power for this build as it significantly boosts Ghost Element damage. It can be crafted in Orc Village and upgraded to Tier 8 using the following materials. So if you are planning to refine it to plus 15, make sure you have sufficient amount of the crafted materials prepared in advance. Its synth version called Myriad Souls grants the following stats. You'll need a tier 4 Lich Staff and Staff of Mana Storm as secondary materials for synthesizing. 
When comparing it to Wizard's Power, Mirrored Souls will grant lower int and ignore M Def, but higher luck, magic attack, ghost damage, M damage, and damage to large size, which are more valuable in my opinion. The lack of ignore M Def from this staff can be offset with the new ancient gears. Last thing to note is that runes will be important for the DPS build, so make sure to save up your glittering runestones and dusty runestones from Thanatos Tower, Echoing Corridor, and events. We'll discuss in more detail the stats, skills, runes equipment, and cards for the DPS build of Soulbinder in the second episode of this series so stay tuned for that. Aside from dealing burst and magic damage, Soulbinders also provide unique support skills by linking souls to their allies, which will grant a buff. Some of the notable buffs are as follows. First, we have the Wizard Soul, which grants an ally the effect of Warlock's White Barrier, making them immune to damage for 5 seconds. And then we have the Ninja Soul, which grants an ally the effect of Ninja's Izayoi, reducing their fixed cast time by 100% and increasing their M pen by 30% for 35 seconds. There are also soul skills that can be linked to enemies causing debuffs. Some of the notable debuffs are as follows. First, we have the Dark Side of the Soul, which makes an enemy deal damage to their allies when casting AoE damage skills. Next is the Priest's Soul, which casts Lex Eterna on the enemy every 2 seconds, which doubles the damage they receive. And then we have the Rogue's Soul, which has a chance to strip the enemy's weapon and headwear. Do take note that only one soul can take effect on a target, so you have to be cautious when choosing your target. As for their weapon, you can either use the Stardust Dragon Staff or the new Blade of Rebirth Staff, which grants huge damage reduction from demi-human race and large or medium-sized enemies. It can be crafted in Geffen and upgraded to Tier 8 using the following materials. So if you're planning to refine it to plus 15, make sure you have sufficient amount of the crafting materials prepared in advance. Its sin version, called the Key to the Other Side, grants the following stats. You'll need a Tier 4 Advanced Survival Staff and Kronos as secondary materials for synthesizing. When comparing it to Stardust Dragon Staff, the new weapon will grant more VIT and damage reduction from demi-human race and all sizes but lower max HP, physical and magic damage reduction, and healing increase stats. Last thing to note is that runes will also be important for the support build, so make sure to save up your glittering runestones and dusty runestones from Thanatos Tower, Echoing Corridor, and events. We'll discuss in more detail the stats, skills, runes, equipment, and cards for the support build of Soulbinder in the third episode of this series so stay tuned for that. Alright, so far we've discussed the overview of the new Soulbinder class coming in the next episode patch update called the Intrigue of the Seven Royals. Stay tuned for my next video as we'll focus more on the stats, skills, runes, equipment, and cards for the DPS build of Soulbinder. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.